Ladies and gentlemen, Silent Mike, welcome back to another fixture form where I take your videos. Squat, bench, deadlift, overhead, whatever you got. And I try to help you guys out, become a little bit stronger, a little bit more jacked. If you want to get involved, send three reps, 70% to askmikke at gmail.com. And we'll get to it as soon as we can. My man's right here. Some conventional pulls. We've talked about it in the past a little bit. The hips. It's all in the hips. It's all in the hips. The hips will find the proper place to pull as soon as there's tension in them. So my man right here sets up a little bit low, and then his hips rise before the barbell moves. Now, that's not the most efficient. It's not the worst case either. But what is not optimal here is that you're going to lock those knees out before you're locking out your hips. And under maximal weights, that weight will pull you forward. If you have totally locked knees and your hips are too high, it will obviously have too much body weight in front of the barbell and end up down. So what I need is those hips a little bit higher and weight more behind the barbell. Shoulders directly over the barbell, hips a little bit higher. Moving on to the next conventional pulls. What kind of gym you in right here, my man? What is this mural on the wall? Czech, Czech Republic? Maybe I'm around Croatia? Croatia? I think it's Croatia. Don't, 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 uh, don't quote me there. Clean. Looks like we got some sumo pulls. It looks really clean. My man here has got a little bit longer torso, um, which overall is going to make the sumo uh, all deadlifting a little bit more difficult and just look different. The goals are always the same, right? Flat back, hips a little bit lower than shoulders, really flex your midsection, flex your lats, flex those quads, lock out hips and knees nearly simultaneous. Um, but with a longer torso, your hips are going to have to be a little bit higher. Uh, so what I try to do here, my man, is just get those shins a hair more vertical. It will actually might make your hips even higher than they are right now. Um, it might make it appear a hair like a, a stiff leg but that's going to be the most optimal bar path and starting position for you uh, this this angle right here will give us a little bit more of an idea but if your shins are a little bit more forward in the sumo pull what's going to happen is as you begin to pull you're going to have to pull that barbell uh, kind of in a u shape around your knees and obviously the most efficient path in anything in life is A to B a straight line. So if we can get those shins a hair more vertical, we'll be able to keep that bar path vertical and hopefully over time use a little bit more weight, a little bit more reps, a little bit more sets. The progressive overload will just be a little bit mo day in and day out. And that'll allow us to uh, not only keep our back a little bit healthier, but get stronger and build some more muscle. Actually, man, from this angle, it looks really good. Um, Looks like the the angle on your toes, yeah, the hips are just a hair lower than they probably can be. So I'd keep um, those hips right about there. Start falling backwards. Think about pushing your hips back, not down towards the bar or the ground, but back behind you, almost like you're falling back into a chair. Uh, allow that weight to hold you up. And then uh, that'll keep those shins a little bit more vertical. And the beautiful thing with, with sumo and conventional, uh, maybe I'm just not as good at the conventional. Uh, maybe a, a bigger, more more efficient conventional puller can speak on it better than me, even though I've, I've maybe pulled 650 for two or three reps there, and 650 for three is my best sumo. So th they're close together. But once I lock everything in, sumo and i'm really pumping i lock my middle I, I get a little lean back i lock my lats i'm squeezing the bar literally for me all i have to do is flex my quads stand up and, and it's literally feels that simple and that's that's years obviously of repetition 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 um conventional for me always kind of felt like a dead lift even though i'd get as tight as i can i get the slack out my midsection is tight my my form is locked in bar pass good i'd still just have to pull you, you still have to kind of push into the ground pull with your back and lean back there's just more kind of sensitive sensation in it for me uh, more cues to do and also um, although although sumo some people say is a higher uh, technique lift than the conventional um, which which in some cases it for sure is both of them take you know years to perfect maybe forever to perfect but years to really refine uh, and once you get less cues in you and you start to just know the motor pattern, your, your body and your brain are, are, are moving as one, you can hopefully just get to pull. Okay, this angle is great. This angle tells me a lot, which I couldn't see from the side. So we want to get those knees over our midfoot, and right here your knees are beyond your foot. They're almost on your toes. So not only do we need a straighter shin, um, but if you're mobile enough, my man, we need to move that stance out. We need to take an advantage of those knees being able to kick way out there. So uh, I would move my heels out probably two, maybe even three inches on each side, and also possibly move those toes out about an inch um, that's going to do multiple things that's going to uh, uh, allow us to cut down the range of motion it's going to allow you to be a hair more upright in your particular case it'll allow us also allow you at lockout or around your knees that hopefully your hands and the barbell will touch slightly less of your thigh that's one issue that a lot of people have with a mixed grip on the conventional or sorry 
mixed grip on the sumo pole uh, is that there's a lot of rub and sometimes your hand will be on the outside of your thigh at lockout but obviously they're in between your legs at the starting position and some of that kind of transition near around the the, the knees or lockout can cause some uh, either helicoptering where you're kind of spinning around um, or even just dropped or mixed grip it obviously makes it a little bit harder hey doggos you agree my doggos say mike you know what you're talking about yup yup a woof woof so uh, make sure uh, to move that stance out my man lighten the load in practice for a while because it might hit uh, some new muscles in a slightly different way it might you know not aggravate anything but you'll be uh, moving slightly different and any of these changes you need to give a couple of weeks any of these suggestions i give you guys give it three four five weeks with practice and maybe loads around 70 75 80 percent so you're not going maximal you can control the changes uh, and they won't they won't result in immediate gains muscular or feel better or or lift more weight not immediately but long term you're allowed to lift a little bit more weight i promise you moving on to some squats my man's got a little bit higher bar position, which is absolutely fine. Uh, typically with a higher bar, you know, knees are going to move a little bit more forward. We always got to keep that bar around our midfoot. Uh, if it's straight over that midfoot, again, also with the squat, we want a straight bar path. That's going to allow us to lift the most amount of weight and be the most efficient, uh, not only with staying injury free, but uh, again, volume and lifting more, most weight. Um, can't really check depth on this view right here. Uh, we're going a slow mo. Uh, I would one yell at my homeboy. Don't touch my barbell. Uh, sir, I can walk this thing out. You only touch the barbell or my uh, nice man pecs when I start to fold over and I'm about to die. But until then you don't touch me. That's what I would tell him man in the gray, but <clears throat> my man in the red sneaks, in the darker gray, uh, that's a really clean squat, dude. Really clean squat. Uh, what I would, uh, you know, just being being nitpicky, uh, see if you can move that grip in a little bit more, squeeze that back a little bit more, and then out of the hole, really think about pushing your traps and leading with your back, as well as forcing those elbows under you. So every squat, a lot of people, um, you know, if, if you're tight midsection and you're not pushing the bar, I one of the common or best cues I've found for me and many is to think about pushing and leading with your back, almost like a conventional pull. Push into that barbell, elbows under just a little bit, my man. Looks really good. See, now we have a little bit lower bar position. Uh, my man's got a little bit wider stance here. So those knees are going to travel a little bit less forward. Uh, but overall, he does a really good job. Pretty dang good job of control right there, dude. Um, what I would suggest for you, my man, uh, is moving that stance in just a hair. You can see out of the hole, those knees are kind of caving in. Yes, it could possibly be you need some external rotation and really grab the ground with your feet and force those uh, glutes to activate a little bit more to, to stabilize the hip. Or you could just try moving your stance in about two inches. Oftentimes, that will take care of itself. Uh, there's, there's multiple reasons our knees may cave in uh, on the squat. You know, I think the most common for most people is just motor pattern. It's just practice. It's going to happen as you're beginning squatting. Uh, the second most common is people dropping down uh, on the eccentric, on the descent, too fast and losing tension. And then what happens is you have no stability in your hips if you drop too fast. And then to put pressure into the ground to squat the barbell with your with, with your glutes, your low back, and your quads, your knee needs to be stabilized to transfer that power. And so in order to transfer that power, our knee wiggles around to try to find the stability within our hamstrings, our glutes, and everything else trying to lock that knee in. And so we're wasting time, we're wasting efficiency, we're wasting energy, and it's obviously not optimal if our knees are moving laterally when all we want to do is move like an elevator or a pump, a piston, straight up and down. So uh, those are the two most common and then the third is probably like my man right here where i think he has the strength i think he has the control but that stance might just be a little bit wide um it might just be a little bit hard for your body how you're formed your morphology uh to push those knees out beyond uh that midfoot this angle will be pretty good too i'm still always so blown away by some of the gyms you guys train at. all of them look pretty dope man I, I wish i had more gyms like this growing up I was just at a regular commercial gym trying to squat and deadlift like an idiot. Hex bar. I know some of you out there feel me. Comment below if you feel me with the pains and gains of deadlifting with some hex plates. I mean, it's not the worst thing, but yeah, my man, that looks really clean. I think you lightened the load on this set. You're squatting about 275. This looks like maybe it's 295. Uh, what I would suggest for sure is uh, even though it's really efficient at this load, you're probably closer to 70, 80% on the other. Uh, I would move that stance in and just give yourself a little bit more confidence with that knee. If your stance is in the in the, in the proper width, uh, you should just be able to, that knee with, with a little bit of training, your knee should just kind of stick in the right spot. Uh, but for anybody else having those knee issues, again, one, addressing um, – 
your stance can help. You know, you, you want to be able to be um, not at the outer edge of your mobility. If your stance is so wide that you're forcing those knees out so hard and they barely get to your midfoot, it's probably not good. So move that stance in. Two, control the descent. We want to be quick but not hurry. We want to, I think about grabbing the ground and pulling my butt towards my calves. Pulling my butt towards my calves. If you're doing that, often you won't drop and then lose that tension because we want constant tension on the descent. We want to be in control, right? We don't want to do a tempo or a time to waste energy necessarily, but we want to be in control of the barbell throughout every lift, throughout every set, every rep ever. And then if not that, then maybe, maybe we need to, you know, strengthen our glutes or figure some other things out, force those knees out, some glute mead, uh, warm up, some things of that nature may help. But the majority of the time, just control that descent, practice perfect reps on every set, every rep, always. Guys, appreciate you again. As always, new videos coming Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. I'm going to be vlogging. We're heading on the road. We got some food vlogs. We got some lifting vlogs. I appreciate everybody for the support. Be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. Salam, Mike. I'm out of here. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Later, y'all.